Brett Chittam here with Lawrence Systems, and I'm here with Tom, and this is Coffee with Tom and Brett. Good morning. You know, we're Good here morning. to talk about does your tech business need a physical location? And when you, over the last couple of years, let's look at 2020. Yeah. It's shown many businesses that you can work remotely and actually be successful and grow your business having your employees work remotely. But yet there's still this controversy of, should you have a physical location? Should you not have a physical location? What are your thoughts, Tom? Well, and it's interesting. Companies that weathered 2020 really well, and I'll use Huntress as an example because I know them very well. They've expanded greatly. And they started long before the incidents that brought us to the 2020 Can You Work Remotely because they were designed remote first. And right. there's always been, and including uh Brett's wife works yeah. remotely. There's a lot of companies that have designed remote first. So one, we absolutely know it's possible, but let's bring it back to the question of, should you, because some roles seem to work really well remotely and some do need some physical space and interaction with people. And it seems like we're, we're a mix and a split here at Lawrence Systems because we have some employees that are remote. We have some employees that are here and it seems to work really well in the tech hardware side that those employees, hey, we like the camaraderie. We like the office feeling we get from mm -hmm. all being together. Um, and I have a mix of friends that used to work in an office and now work remotely that kind of just miss hanging out in the office. But it <laughs> It seems like the people who are really focused in like developers want to just go leave me alone. I plan to write code for the next X hours uh, with being, you know, uninterrupted. So you right. kind of figure out the different types and personalities of whether or not you need it. But what about having a physical address? And you do need some type of probably not just your home address. And we'll throw someone out there like Riley, who I've interviewed on here from Hostify. Right. He does have a co-working type of address list because he didn't want to just list his house as where he works, even though he works from home. And he's he's built a remote team and it works really well. They've built an right. incredible product with Hostify uh, and that is where you can build it remotely. So one, I did say you do need some type of physical address. I, I agree, you know, having that physical address to get packages. Um, and, and do you want people coming to your house? When I was doing my consulting business, it was the same, I had my physical address and I wish I hadn't. Yeah. Um, because somehow it showed up on Google as Chittam <laughs> Consulting at my home address. <laughs> Not a good thing in, in, in that aspect. So yeah, having, having a physical location is important. You can do certain things like a PO box, Yep. right? Um, we talked before this about Detroit has a number of places that are co-working spaces. You can rent a small little office and you get in that small little office, an actual physical location, yep. you get a conference room, you get um, a place to receive your packages when you're not there. It's, it's, a, it's a great option for companies <clears throat> that are trying to really build their presence maybe in a certain location, right? Yeah. And I, I bring up the offices like Detroit, because if you take a company and we're talking a big company that uh, was local here, like Duo, Duo prior to their purchase from Cisco, they had their co-working space. Yes, Duo, the company that was bought for like a billion dollars, had a co-working space at Bamboo Detroit, which I know some of the people that runs that. <laughs> but wherever you're at, there's definitely some local spaces available. There's some national places like the UPS store is an example of where you can not get office space, but just get a physical address, a place to get your packages, because right. not everywhere. There are, there are going to be a few things that go, they want a little more than a PO box to kind of legitimize you. Mm -hmm. And this is where that address on there. Now, even for us, we're migrating back to just for all of our invoices, we want those going to a PO box, but you know, we do have a physical building address and it, it, there's some things you may want to have split that way. If you ever move and you know, Hey, we are looking for buildings. If you know one for sale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah if you know one for sale, that's kind of why we're talking about this topic, right, Tom? Cause we're, yeah. we're, we're going through this process ourselves. And, and we're finding that there, we have some people working here that do not want to work from home. They don't. Right. And we have some people that love working from home and we have a hybrid mix. So we are kind of a hybrid option here. So when we're actually looking for spaces, hint, hint, if you know one available, yeah. we'd love to see it, um, <laughs> is that we're trying to look at still being that hybrid option because yeah. we do tech work inside this office. There are things that need to happen here that we have a whole lab set up so that we can actually 
test things prior to them going into real production, right? Yeah. So these are things that we need to lab things out. And of course, the studio space. So we're maybe a little bit of an exception. But I do know a lot of other people in the IT MSP space that mm -hmm. have just sold their office. Um, but you still need to keep it's it is a little bit of a legitimacy to say, all right, here's an address. Now, the UPS store, I threw it out there. It's probably the least expensive way to get started. You probably want to look at something a little bit and if you look at like professional offices that do this type of service, um, the nice thing about them, if you look up the address for a UPS store, you'll find lots of businesses there. If you look at the other one, other professional service offices that are around and they're in every major city, you'll find ones that offer you really small spaces uh, that you can have just so you have that physical address. So you may yeah. still work from home and maybe you just have a like 200 square feet, a uh, yeah. little singular office there. I, it's important to have some type of solid address to kind of legitimize it to also put that on your website just so we know what region you're in. This is a weird thing I run into when I just want to know. I look at people's website and I want to know at least what region they service. Uh, right. Even if they're remotely servicing a lot of things, you know, where are their physical offices? Where roughly are they located? Um, are they all in Florida? And is hurricane season a issue <laughs> for you? <laughs> I'm just curious. Um, and I, I think Time zones. Yeah, time zone. You're, oh, that's another one too. What time zone you're in? Of course, then again, there's people who have offices out of state. It's lots to think about, but I do want to just give you that takeaway it is important that you have physical address it is fine yeah. to split it too if uh because even we're going back to splitting it to where we have a p.o box just so all of our invoices go somewhere because there's some convenience to that for uh processing all the invoices and mm -hmm. everything else we still have our physical address for people who send things to us and where we get the server shipped to or any of the equipment that builds right. our lab um you know we have that publicly facing on our website so people know where we're at but uh yeah we just want to talk about that it's it's not a hundred percent one way or the other even you look at i mentioned huntress they have a physical building where they can have people at but right uh, it's not big enough for the size at which they've grown so it's something to think about that yes you can build your entire company remotely and 2020 uh you know well, let's say it sorted out the skeptics who thought you couldn't <laughs> <laughs> it certainly did didn't it yeah yeah and and as you go through this process you're going to figure out your own way because your business is your business, right? We do things a certain way. Everybody else in the, in the tech space do, does things their own way. And it's yeah. got to work for you. And like Fred said earlier, don't use your home address. Uh, do not. Uh, yeah. If your business gets really big, next thing you know, people are like, hey, that's where they live. <laughs> Or right. even worse, when you don't live there anymore, there becomes a different level of confusion when <laughs> you, invoices show up to whoever does live there. And yeah, that could be an issue, too, because you still have all the state forms to fill out, uh, right. federal forms, all your tax forms here in the U.S. They do need addresses uh, where to put that. And if you looking a lot of them will not allow for a P.O. box for those. So that that's why you kind of have to figure out some of these because that'll be right. the accountant questions. Matter of fact, some accounting firms even offer it um, as a full service accounting. If people were to bother to dig up some of our tax information that is publicly available, you'll actually find my accountant's address because that's where we have our tax form set. Uh, yep. We've already split that. We don't publicly list it because it's only for state use. Um, but for people have wondered, are you over uh, at this address? And I'm like, no, that's my accountant's address because yeah. well, they're, they, we off, they have full service County and we send all of our paperwork there for that. I don't want exactly. It. I I just give it to them and ask them what it means anyway. So, That's right. <laughs> all right, and thank you, thank you, and thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a short project, head over to LawrenceSystems.com and click the hire us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.